Hello everybody. Last class we completed with the general overview that reinforced concrete structures particularly your say flexural elements and that we have discussed the three methods working stress method as per IRC 21 as well as as per IS 456 also. Next one as per IS 456 and then IRC 112 that is the new code and I would like to tell that one that is also similar to Euro code also. What I would like to say regarding these different codes you will find out certain similarity because we all live in the same earth. So, how do you feel that it will be different to different countries? There is certain specific thing will be different for different countries and that way the I would like to mention here before we start the today's program that Eurocode they have made such a way that few more few clauses which will be country specific. Similarly, here also that way also we can think of it in our um, country also that like say your different zones of earthquake that is one particular common example too for everybody. So, that way we can find out that the clauses which are supposed to be changed according to the geography that if we can identify and it can be changed. So, the code can be like that. Here also I would like to mention here in this case that since I am taking that one instead of taking only one method I would like to compare that because it is not the one formula we would like to understand that how that formula works that is the beginning. So, we, we are not carrying over that same whatever we have done in the reinforced conquest structure elements last class that we are not moving with the same one rather let us take one problem and that problem on design of solid slab bridges. So, with considering that aspect today we are starting with the lecture number 9 and they are we shall take different views obviously it is not uh, only it will not be in one particular um, say within half an hour it is not possible. So, it will be carried over to other sessions also other modules also other lecture session also maybe it will go up to 10, 11 like that lecture number 10, lecture number 11 also. So, these are the general guidelines so far we shall try to accommodate up to say impact factors and bending moment and shear force because we are talking this one here the slab bridge that is mainly it will we ha, it has to be registered by say shear force and bending moment considering that aspect. So, our topic today we shall start now with a problem before that let us introduce that slab bridge and what are the very specific design principle for that that we shall discuss and then we shall move to a particular problem because our main objective of this course that you understand that how to design you can design on your own also and also you can understand that particular one that dimension whatever you are giving that how far it is correct. So, that also would like to understand that particular aspect rather I would like to say that we would like to feel it rather just only simple computation for bridge engineering or for a particular bridge it is not just a number the structure itself you have to feel if you can understand that and then it will be easier uh, to um, get your confidence. A slab bridge obviously the simplest type of construction adopted for small spans slab bridges of span 10 meter that is generally we observe and the range of span that generally we, I have told you 8 to 12 meter we can start from 5 meter also or 3 meter also that way also um, and depending on. But what I mean to say whenever we are talking say slab bridge generally it comes in that range otherwise we go for some kind of say culvert type of 
mm, that one we call it. So, we consider a specific name. The thickness of the slab will be, con will be considerably high, but its construction is simpler and the cost of formwork also is that less. So, this is the one that first one we are introducing that in bridging particularly in reinforced concrete road bridges, this is the first one you can consider. Because we would like to follow a journey and in the journey this is our first step and then we shall go to next step that where we shall feel yes, now we require different formwork that slab bridge is not sufficient rather it will not be at all will be economic. There are two aspects there is a uh, u is missing here hydraulic u is missing whenever I shall give that note there I shall correct it u is hydraulic design when the bridge crosses the water body such as canals rivers like that. So, obviously, we are having for a canal or for a river we are having certain natural um, flow natural slope that one is there and now you are obstructing that. And in normal situation, there will be no problem, but in abnormal situation, like say high flood, that level, that time, it may happen that one that since already you have obstructed that one, so you have to give certain natural flow. So, on the basis of that, you have to decide what will be the height of the soffit of the that bottom of the bridge, what, where would be the height that one should be from the water level so that there should not be any problem or rather I can say the bridge will never be submerged. So, that is our objective that we have to take care. Considering that aspect and that aspect we consider that one from the hydraulic design and that we generally do it before that um, before actually your design. So, that one is decided at the time of general preparation general arrangement of drawing that one. So, uh, this portion definitely we could start that particular one if we get time we shall come back to that particular problem how to make it, but before that mainly say flyover other things where that water body is not there there is no such flow. So, we can directly we can consider certain kind of say span and that span which will fit for your that slab bridge that we can decide. So, we shall consider our say second aspect first that is your say structural design and this is applicable for all bridges that is flyovers etcetera to provide suitable depth reinforcement plate thickness like that that is obviously for the steel structure if we consider plate thickness here. But anyway, so this particular aspect we shall consider here that is the one we shall consider the structural design. So, as usual I can take that we shall take the structural design of slag, slab deck bridge that is a very very simple one as if you are giving a piece of paper and that piece of paper should be we are putting that piece of paper or a cloth that one you are spanning from one support to another support that one. Now, the question is that what will be the thickness of that cloth or what will be the thickness of that paper that is our objective and that we would like to find out to do that what you have to find out you have to find out what will be the bending moment and obviously, this particular one that is your simply supported bridge. So, bending moment obviously will be maximum at the middle and shear force that definitely that one will be at the support. So, these are the two aspects we have to find out these two one that bending moment and shear force you have to find out and then we shall solve and then we shall see that whether the section provided that is perfectly all right or not. Now, this particular aspect is very important that so far those uh, who are actually that B tech in the and also still studying in colleges in our institute that you have done structural analysis and you have seen that your loads which are coming as say your wheel load that one coming as a concentrated load that is the one we considered. But the wheel obviously, we are having certain impression that is the load gets dispersed along span wise 
and also width wise. So, this particular impression will be there and also it will be dispersed that particular load also will be dispersed. So, that load also you have to find out that how much load will come. So, that means, whatever it is you can consider that you can consider definitely you can consider as a concentrated load no doubt about it, but at the same time we can consider this one as a just area load and on the basis of that we can find out. So, that the load the stress will come say may be certain kind of say your certain level of on say scale less. So, that is also obviously it will help us to make a make an economic design. For that case there are actually many more methods actually there is one more method actually here just to give you idea that effective width method, Pigou's coefficient method that is another method actually Westergaard's method also available, but whatever the methods commonly used that uh, we are actually uh, describing here. Because the main objective another objective of this course to introduce in this whole area and so that because the thing is that you should also know the domain, the domain where you will get that information. One can say okay, now I shall do the Google and then I shall find out, but you will find out so much enormous information from there to get um, that you say um, that important one and also relevant one it will take another 10 hours. So, that means it is almost equivalent of this course itself. So, coming to that particular one here we would like to introduce that whatever actually methods available commonly used that we are going to describe. Coming to this particular one here that effective width method and this one we can say applicable where one way action prevails in the present case in slab bridges. So, this is the one actually we shall use it here that means, whatever load we are having that load will having have certain kind of effective width that means, that apparently it looks like the contact area on the surface of the deck that is that one you can say finally, you can say certain it is dispersed and then that dispersed area is coming more than the contact area. So, obviously, your stress will be less and and accordingly obviously, that your bending moment shear force that one also will come less that we shall see that one that is our objective that one we like to do it. And then Pigou's coefficient method slab is supported on all four sides the short span and long span bending when coefficients are read from Pigou's chart. This chart I am not introducing now, but later on in RCC T beam bridges that time we shall introduce this one. Just I am referring this one that this is another method whatever available and this is will be used during obviously I have told you that RCC T beam bridges that one. So, what we are going to do now that effective width method this particular method we shall use it and uh, that those who have done that RCC design that I think that you have used that say your IS 456, where you are having certain concentrated load if it is on the floor and how that load will give you that moment and that we can calculate that one. That is that they are also calculate that effective width that is a formula and the same formula we shall use it here also. So, what I am trying to say here whenever we are having this say reinforced concrete design generally we use it one that uh, road which goes goes towards uh, building design and another one it goes towards bridge design particularly reinforced concrete bridge that is the one and obviously there are certain other aspects also um, that bunker silo water tank that also you have to treat separately that is so generally the basic one reinforced concrete design that which I have told you that I, IS 456 or IRC 21 or IRC 112 that particular one we are having and then from there we have to find out certain kind of things applicable for bridge or bridges particularly reinforced concrete bridges that we have to know. So, that we can directly apply that reinforced concrete design. So, coming to this particular one here. Let us see that different components of slab bridges. I have this particular one already I introduced in that uh, your say that introduction of this particular course, 
but again let us just take a part of it so that we can discuss in detail and that one we can find out here. So, this is the complete that bridge which comes here and uh, this one let us say this particular bridge can move that traffic can move vehicles can move from this direction to this direction and this direction this direction that one you can say that you are having actually that both ways traffic actually you are having and then we can find out this thickness also and then and this is the one that actually the thing is that all made of concrete. So, it should be actually that same color, but we have given this color separate only to identify the different components otherwise it may be difficult to understand that which one is what. So, here we are having say crash barrier this is another view you can see. So, obviously that particular one we are talking actually now superstructure this is the slab deck that is the one our superstructure and this superstructure supported by two abutments. These abutments are also made of reinforced concrete. So, that way you can say that reinforced concrete. So, we shall go just we shall introduce that uh, some introductory thing we shall give it for substructure particularly abutments so that you can understand that what will be the thickness of abutment other things. So, then all it will this particular course will be complete in all respects. We shall not be able to go to full design of that one that one you can see from uh, that I, I hope I shall introduce um, few books also. So, that actually you can understand that where from we will get the rest of the information, but anyway, but mainly we are talking about say slab superstructure. So, this is your another view we have given this particular view. Now, you can see this particular one here this is the abutment. So, whenever you are talking abutment then we are having that base and base and then we are having steam, then we are having abutment cap and this one this is sufficient actually this portion but we have given this one so that um, that you would say soil other things all those things will not also that you would say road if we do not give here that here we are having that say for example, this particular one that bridge will be there the slab. Now, from there here earth will be there. So, that earth that particular portion slowly it will go in this particular different places it will come. So, we avoid that one we can actually um, we keep this dot wall here. So, this is the one that one you can consider this one abutment and always for a bridge you will have two abutments one in the beginning you can say that um, and another one in the other side these are the two abutments you will have and obviously, that abutment we design separately the two abutments because it may for whenever you are talking say flyover and flyover let us say it is 1 kilometer long say flyover or more than that. So, obviously, when the abutment is one place say for example, I have started that one say 100 kilometer chainage. Generally, whenever we specify a particular bridge that we call it with the chainage. Chainage that particular one just let me write down this one say chainage. and this one we mention in kilometer. Please note kilometer k should be small, kilometers k always it is small. Similarly, kilo newton k n capital, but k is small that is kilo newton. So, coming to this one here chainage that one generally we specify in kilometer and meter say for example, we are I am just giving some number say 100 plus 005. So, this means that 100 kilometer generally starts from a particular city. So, that from the main city it will go and from that particular location it will start 1 kilometer 001, 002, 003 and then this change means actually from that particular city that one it is at 100 kilometer 5 meter away 
this is the one generally challenge we give. So, whenever you are having something like this, it may happen that when you are having flyover, I am talking the plan. So, you are starting from here and you are ending here. So, you require one abutment here, another abutment here. So, this one let us say we are considering A1 and this one we are considering A2. So, this is the one and you are having more number of actually the, uh, your say PR we call it just to give it here PR. So, abutment and PR and these are made, made of reinforced concrete. Now, coming to this one here, I would like to say base that you are having that base over that your stem will come. So, obviously, you have to find out what will be the thickness of this stem. This height other things there are two aspect one is we call it say substructure another one we call it say foundation. So, here we can say that uh, we can consider this particular one say footing that abutment itself actually you can consider as a substructure because below that if you are having piles other things that way you can consider as a foundation that way you can consider. Now, coming to this particular one here we are having that we have to know this thickness how far it will go from the ground level those things you will find out from the geotechnical investigation. So, that information from there we shall find out how far below it will come so that we are getting the proper bearing capacity and so that I, we can transfer the load whatever coming to the superstructure that load can be transferred to the ground. Then we are having that one the same thing whatever we have discussed. So, here that slab will come we can give few bearings here we are giving that particular one here then we are having another site we are giving that wing wall and then the slab this slab we have to design this is our main thing that means first thing we should know what will be the length there is one more thing i can say there is one if you see that particular one from this end to other end that is called actually clear so, what will be the clear span that we can see and then we can calculate that your say effective span. So, this is our that slab that uh, we have then we are providing that your say crash barrier that uh, we are providing that crash barrier and footpath also. And I have shown this particular one say load that means here that over that what load is coming that will, this is of course, I have given IRC class A loading that whatever we have discussed in earlier lecture that one we have discussed. So, this is your say that loading that we are having here that vehicles this particular one here we are having and then this load will come there is another load is called IRC class um, 70 year loading that also there. So, how many loads we shall consider other things we have discussed and that one will be followed as per IRC 6. So, as per IRC 6 we can actually um, find out that which load to be taken that all those things we can consider here. Now, whenever we are having this particular one here just to make that one we require something that is called say one term we have given that is a clear span. Another one we call it say effective span. Generally, we mention this one in meter. Generally, if you find out the dimensions whenever we specify that parameters of our say your um, that bridge for a structure, you will find out that uh, we give the dimension 
in a particular unit. Whenever we talk say span, generally we mention that one say your um, in meter. Though you can mention everything in one unit, say for example meter or millimeter like that. Say for example, whenever you are talking say your say slab thickness, we never say something say 125 uh, 0.125 meter or say 0.2 meter. We always say 200 millimeter, 120 millimeter like that. But whenever we talk say span, then we talk that particular one in meter. So that is the one general. Generally, we follow um, that particular one here. Now, we have also discussed with that effective width. We have also discussed that effective width, and this is related to. this is related to concentrated load. So, we have to find out that also that effective width that what we have to find out. Now, what is our objective out of that I have shown you a picture that and that one we have I have shown you the question is that what going here what I am going to find out. So, there are few things first that what will be the carriage way. That means, so far I know a very simple thing. This is the bridge actually cross section. And then we have shown the one like this crash barrier and then we are having footpath in both sides say it can be one side also. So, this portion carriage way the vehicle will move. So, this is the one we you know. So, that one obviously, it will be dependent on our requirement that how much we shall give, whether we shall give a single lane, whether we shall give double lane or triple lane and that we shall follow from, from IRC 5. So, this is the one we have to then we have to give say what will be the footpath we are giving 1.5 meter like that we give. But uh, sometimes we give one meter also. Sometimes we give one seven. Though it is um, because the because of hand crunch, other things, it happens like that. This is called crash barrier. I have shown it, but I am writing that particular one so that uh, it is easier to understand that particular. So our objective here. This one that means a very simple thing this cross section the this width we know carriageway how much we have to find out from the IRC 5 footpath width if it is both sides fine if it is one side that is also fine and then you are having say your cash barrier you can consider this one say 500 like that you can consider here and then you can find out the total width of this. The next question is coming how much shall we provide this say d and this one we are talking overall depth. So, this is our next one that one that we have to first now as I have told you in the very beginning of this course in the class today that as if you are giving a cloth the cloth is actually moving from one support to another support or you are having a piece of paper as a or a made of paper the thickness that we have to provide so that we can actually use it. So, this is our that overall depth d that we have to find out and on the basis of that uh, we have to move and since it is reinforced concrete. So, we have to provide that reinforcement also.
and as I have told you, so this is this is your main consideration that whenever you are talking that particular one here, this is your main consideration that this you have to provide. Next, other things will come into picture that you would say. Um, I can say crash barrier, other things the design also we have to do lot of other things. But first thing that one if it if it is fine this particular one here because you will find out so many other reinforcement that I shall show you. But the thing is the main thing that overall depth D and this reinforcement because these are the main reinforcement that we have to provide since it is simply supported beam. So, reinforcement will be at the bottom. So, that particular one let us um, conclude this session up to this and then we shall start with the problem statement. Thank you very much.